so quick update on the engine and the progress I made so far so as we can see now we have the full night pack uh, full PBR again right so this is using the new material system It's using the new backhand that allows me to use different APIs so as you can see here this is using Vulkan you can see by the color because DirectX, I keep it flat blue, standard, I'm gooey blue. Instead, Vulkan, I decided to color depending on the GPU I'm using. So this is Vulkan running on my AMD GPU because it's red, right? Um, so there is quite a bit of work that happened, as I said, materials, API bindings. I had to rework so many times the material system to find something I was happy with. And I'm actually going to show you that in a little. Uh, the new... Um, shader comp uh, recompiler, but the recompiling the shader on the fly, that's working again. So that's mostly the progress. PBR working for both DirectX and Vulkan. Now, uh, how does the new material system works? And uh, I'm going to show you in a little. But basically, the main idea is you have binding tables. All right. So with a binding tables, you create it just with a description right so hopefully this is clear enough so this is the skybox this is a really simple use case but basically you define a description right so basically say hey i just have one descriptor uh it's going to be a texture and it's visible in the fragment shader this is where you find it right so you define that generically you create it and then under the hood uh, the corresponding binding table manager this is virtual so there is one implemented for DirectX and vulcan is going to do the right thing so it's going to create in the case of Vulkan it's going to create a descriptor set with this specification and then what you do you can bind stuff to it uh, right so actually sorry here uh, I'm binding stuff to it actually where I'm doing so bind oh we got sorry here so bind texture right so I'm binding to my table I'm binding a texture in this case is the skybox the cube map that you see in the background right and you can do the same with uh, bind buffer, etc. And that's how it works. Then when you want to render, you just bind it and it's good to go. Uh, now, this works, of course, if you're rendering a simple mesh. So this is a simple use case. I was just rendering a cube uh, for the skybox. That's the simplest case. Um, but what happens if you want to do something more complex? And we can have a look here. So this is my forward plus bus, which forward plus is a lie. It's not forward plus yet, but that's what it's going to be, just forward for now. But the way it works is that I'm rendering a whole queue, okay? So when I create materials, I assign them to a queue. Right now the queue is called forward, which shouldn't be. It should be called opaque, but it's basically a legacy thing because before I had a deferred, so then I made a forward and basically just reusing old code I have. So it needs it to be refactored by just a matter of renaming the queue. It's going to be opaque, transparent, those different queues. And basically, I'm just saying, please, render everything that is in that queue. Then, when I go, when we jump into the code again, VK or DX, and it's going to, actually, let's, let's see if I can find it where this code is. The CPP. So this is the, the Vulkan. So render... Render queue type. So what it does is looping by queue. So right, so we have different queues. It's looping them. It binds the root signature on a PSO once per material, and then there is a second inner loop where it basically render each uh, geometry with the same material, right? And this works in the same way. We have materials that we can bind, and it's gonna do the right thing uh, at the right time. So we have those two different ways. You can either bind it manually if you're doing something specific. Or if you really need to render a lot of things, you can just add it to the queue. Um, so those are the two methods. The other big refactor that I did was like to split out the resource binding. So we can actually see it here. I separated my root signature into three parts, three different sets. So set zero is basically the per frame data. Set one is the uh, per uh, pass and then there is a per object and there is also the samplers but 
that's a different story. But basically those are the main three, right? So basically in order of they change, per frame date is like the camera, that's changed once per frame. Then there is the per pass. Well, for example, forward plus, I need to bind the lights. I want to bind them once, not for every material. So that I'm doing. Uh, so once per pass, sorry. So once per root signature, actually. And then the per object instead is gonna be bound every time we need to render that object. So we can see you here, for example, uh, so I'm going to bind uh, the specific layout and the specific sets that I have on the uh, per frame data binding index and then here per pass binding index. So here I'm binding the two different um, part of the root signature. And then, then internally, when I bind the material, instead it will bind per object, right? So those are the all the different changes that I had to do. So this was a quick look of the code just to give an idea roughly uh, how it works under the hood because this is the Vulkan implementation and there's going to be see really similar at DirectX. Now, now that I created this binding table, my idea is that I want to push that abstraction lower. I want to be able to basically have the materials be 100% dependent on the binding tables and basically the material becomes generic. Because right now I have a material manager per DirectX and per Vulkan. With the new binding table system, that should be able to go away because all the lower level logic of the API is a binding table. So basically I should be able to move out to be generic, the material manager. So that's what I'm working toward basically pushing down the abstraction and lifting system out to become generic, so I have to maintain one path instead of multiple. So that's the idea. Then I started working on something else uh, because I basically was in front of decision. So do I keep pushing and converting the rest of the engine uh, to work on both Vulkan and DirectX? Like basically I need to, to get back to the same level DirectX was. So shadows, parallax mapping, uh, subsurface scattering, all this stuff, skinning, all this stuff. So basically converting the shader, fixing the abstraction where I need it. So all that kind of stuff, which I need to do. Uh, I w after all this work, I was just a bit tired of engine plumbing. So it's like, I want to do something graphics again, something new. So I'm working, uh, I'm maybe to look at grass. Uh, not ready to show you yet, but I'm going to do that soon. But again, so this is a, a quick update on the engine, so we have the full static character uh, with the whole PBR. We can see the reflection of the sky on the on the armor here, depending on the roughness, all, all the fancy stuff. So you can see here we have all the, the Fresnel uh, because it's not occluded by shadows, but it will once we have shadows again. But I'm working on something else. I'm working on grass, which I'm going to show you really soon. So this is an update. I uh, hope you like, subscribe to the channel and share the video around, it really helps uh, and see you in the next video.